Boston's largest service provider for the homeless is marking its 50th anniversary with an ambitious fundraising campaign. The Pine Street Inn was founded in 1969 as a shelter. Over the past five decades, there have been many changes in the homeless population and the housing market, but also the pathways to stability and self-sufficiency. To tell us about the history and plans for the future is Pine Street's president and executive director, Lindia Downey, uh, thank you very much for being with us, Lindia. Thanks for having us. First of all, refresh my mind about the history here because I, I think one thing I came across said 50 years ago, Pine Street Inn was just supposed to be something temporary. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. So Pine Street was originally on Pine Street in Chinatown in a building that was slated to be torn down. Uh, previous to being Pine Street Inn, it was called the, um, the Urban Rescue Mission. Uh, the people who ran it literally closed it one day, and a small group of priests called the Association for Boston Urban Priests came in and took it over because they were so worried about, at the time, homeless men having no place to go. Uh, that group ran it for about a year, and then they decided it was they needed some help, and they brought in a, a nonprofit board and incorporated Pine Street separately. Uh, and then we moved to, Pine, uh, to Harrison Ave in the South End in 1984. And, and this does coincide with urban renewal in, mm -hmm. in the South End. I even had a relative who was an SRO, a single room occupancy, trying to recover yeah. and get his life together. Yeah. So I guess that was being shaken up at the time, too. You know, at one point there was over, I think, 20,000 lodging house rooms in the city of Boston. Beacon Hill, South End, uh, large parts of the city, Com Ave, very large parts of the city had single rooms for people. And the lodging houses were really a throwback to single immigrants who came to the country trying to make their way. Uh, but many of them disappeared through urban renewal. Many of them were converted to condominiums or other uh, property for sale or rental. And so we've lost that stock. You know, one of Pine Street's, one of our jobs, frankly, is to try and find the, that type of housing and preserve it where we can. Um, in, in other cases, you know, we're, we're looking for property and land to buy to, to develop more housing. But losing lodging houses had a very big, bag, very big impact on low-income single people, but also people with disabilities who don't have a lot of other housing options. What about your own uh, involvement with, with Pine Street? How did that start? I had moved to Boston. I went to the University of Vermont. I had moved to Boston with my college roommate because she was moving here and it sounded like a good idea. Um, that was about as far as my plans went, Chris. I had decided to apply for law school. I had taken the, um, the LSATs and was going to start applying and I needed a job for six to eight months until I found out where I was going to go. And at the time I had a, uh, a roommate who had gone to Boston College and I was waiting for her one day and happened to read a piece in the BC Alumni magazine about Paul Sullivan who started Pine Street and I ripped that page out of the magazine and thought, boy, this sounds like a really interesting place. What an interesting man Paul Sullivan was. Paul had just passed away. And uh, I don't know, maybe two weeks later I saw an ad in the Globe for a job working for the winter at Pine Street Inn and I applied and got the job. It was, I think, about a four or five month job. And after that, the woman who hired me said, you know, there's another job opening up. Would you like to stay for a little while? And I thought, I'll stay for one year and I will do this next job. And, you know, 30 odd years later, here, here I am. What made you stay? I mean, there are a lot of, uh, you know, bright young people who work with folks going through a rough patch for a while. They do that for a number mm -hmm. of months or maybe mm -hmm. one year. But why did you stick with it? You know, a um, couple of reasons. You know, very quickly, I think I got smitten with the guests. I got to know some of the guests, even though my first job was working with the volunteers and clothing donors. I was able to, funny enough, the last two hours of my day, every day, I had to answer the phones at the front desk at Pine Street. I had to take our phone console from the second floor down to the first floor because we had no coverage. And so I'd answer the phones. And I got to know especially a lot of the men. And I just started to develop some relationships, got to know a lot of the staff. And, and I really became smitten with the place and the people, the guests in particular. And I, another opportunity opened up and I stayed. And I've been really fortunate to have wonderful mentors and to been allowed to really grow and make mistakes and learn from them and, and have a very supportive board. Pine, Pine Street, um, nobody really runs Pine Street in. It, it, you, you just get to be the holder of the values and the holder of a, of a place for a little while. Um, and, and my job is to make sure the frontline staff can do their job. But it's, it's a unique and uh, really fascinating place. 
This is BNN News, and we're talking with Lyndia Downey from the Pine Street Inn. Lyndia, one other thing that has changed over the past uh, 50 years is that earlier we thought housing was something that people would get uh, when they get their lives together and they get stabilized. Yeah. Now it's the other way around. We call it housing first. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why the change? So uh, there was a fellow in New York named Sam Timbaris who uh, is a uh, psychiatrist and he worked at Bellevue Hospital and ten, at least 10, 15 years ago, uh, Sam did some work on the streets and he would ask people on the street what they wanted and they said, I want housing. And Sam said, well, this is an interesting idea. What if we gave people housing and brought the services to them? And so that really was the beginnings of, of Housing First and we at Pine Street had already been developing housing and moving people in, as you said, after people got their life together, housing was really the reward at the end of that. But one of the things that was very frustrating to us is that the people who needed the help the most and who desperately needed to get out of homelessness because the instability of homelessness was actually making things worse for them is that we couldn't house them under the current structure. So we um, were able to work with the city of Boston. We placed 30 of our longest term guests in scattered site apartments and we had a small team of support staff who supported those folks. And after a year, 83% of them were still in housing. And I thought, well, this is fascinating. Everybody see these, said these folks could not be housed, they couldn't hold on to their housing, they wouldn't respond to the support, and the opposite actually was true. That really was the beginning of our journey into Housing First and really into shifting this paradigm to housing people who have been homeless the longest and, and who sometimes have the, the most extreme challenges of everybody out there. And this sounds like what you're trying to do more of with, with your fundraising campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that supposed to work exactly? So right now Pine Street has about 800 units of housing that we either own or manage. Some are units in the market where we work with private landlords, but most are uh, buildings that we've rehabbed ourselves or rehabbed with uh, another partner. And we're aiming as part of our 50th anniversary to get to the point where we have another 200 units of housing, which would bring us to a total of 1,000 units of supportive housing in greater Boston and Brookline. Uh, we know supportive housing is the answer to homelessness. We know it has uh, not just impact, obviously, on the people who move in, we know there's lots of health care and other savings when people move into supportive housing because they get out of this horrible emergency room, inpatient, street cycle. Um, and housing really stops all that and, and creates um, a, a stable platform to begin to work with people. So we're very committed to that and our, you know, the bulk of our campaign will go to both building new housing and sustaining the services uh, that will be embedded in that housing. If only because of the opioids crisis throughout the whole country, I would have expected that things would be getting worse in Boston, but I guess uh, maybe not so much so, and, and, and at least in terms of the homeless population, and I guess we have the smallest percentage of homeless mm -hmm. in Boston on the streets. What, what's being done right? Well, let me say we, we have a long way to go, and I, you know, I, I don't want to rest on our laurels because the opioid crisis... Uh, is not helping, obviously, and it, it's one of those headwinds along with very a very expensive housing market that's coming at us that, that's actually making it harder to make more progress. Having said that, Boston, we do an annual census every year with the mayor where we literally go out and count the number of people on the street, we count the number of people in shelter. We, for the past four or five years, have been in the, the of, t of 10 cities in the country, one of the lowest in terms of street count. So this year we actually went below 3%. What does that mean? Of all the people that are homeless in the city of Boston, less than 3% of them actually stay out. Compared to San Francisco, which is 50%, uh, Las Vegas, which is more than 50%, uh, Seattle, uh, again, above 50%. Sometimes people say it's the weather. It's, it's, it's maybe, but it's not all the weather. It is a very deliberate approach to a comprehensive set of plans. Uh, the city has a homeless a plan to end homelessness. We're all working off that single plan. And it's intensive, intensive street outreach, of which Pine Street's been doing now for probably 25 years. Well, I, I know you always could uh, do with some more help from the community, government agencies, whatever. So if people want some more information, you've got the website they yep. can check out? Yep, absolutely. Uh, PineStreetIn.org. Uh, if you're interested in um, hearing more about our work, if you're interested in uh, volunteering or making a gift, everything's on the website. Thank you very much for being with us. And happy Thank anniversary. You. <laughs> Thank you. Lindia Downey from the Pine Street Inn. In a moment, we'll tell you about a new podcast for caregivers.